ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਮੈਂ ਪਵਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਅੱਜ ਫੇਰ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਮਾਈ ਟੀਵੀ ਦੇ ਸਟੂਡੀਓ ਤੋਂ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਮਾਈ ਸ਼ੋ ਮਾਈ ਲਾਈਫ ਲਾਈ ਕੇ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਸੇਵਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹਾਜ਼ਰ ਹਾਂ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਸ਼ੋ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਦਿਲਚਸਪ ਸ਼ਖਸੀਅਤ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਤਵਾਰਫ ਕਰਾਵਾਂਗੇ ਔਰ ਨਾਲ ਨਾਲ ਜੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਕਿਤਾਬ ਲਿਖੀ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਦਾ ਟਾਈਟਲ ਹੈ ਕੈਪਟੀਵੇਟਿੰਗ ਦ ਸਿੰਪਲ ਹਾਰਟਡ ਉਸ ਕਿਤਾਬ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਚਾਨਣਾ ਪਾਵਾਂਗੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉਸ ਕਿਤਾਬ ਦਾ ਸਬਜੈਕਟ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਡੂੰਗੀ ਸਾਂਝ ਤੇ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਿਊਸ ਕਰਾਉਣਾ ਪੀਟਰ ਫ੍ਰੈਡਰਿਕ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਹੋਏਗਾ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾਤਰ ਭਾਸ਼ਾ ਵਰਤੀ ਜਾਏਗੀ ਉਹ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਹੀ ਹੋਵੇਗੀ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਪੀਟਰ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਜੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਨਾ ਕੁਝ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਹਾਂ ਲੈਟ ਮੀ ਗੋ ਹੈਡ ਐਂਡ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਿਊਸ ਪੀਟਰ ਫ੍ਰੈਡਰਿਕ ਪੀਟਰ ਆਈ ਆਈ ਡੂ ਅਪਰੀਸ਼ੀਏਟ ਥੈਟ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਡਿਸਾਈਡ ਟੂ ਕਮ ਹੀਅਰ ਟੂ ਆਰ ਸਟੂਡੀਓ ਟੂ ਪੁੱਟ ਸਮ light on the subject that you have tried to capture in this captivating the simple heart of title first of all i would like you to go ahead and introduce to you to our viewers and uh, please go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself just a brief biography what you have done so far and then along with that i would like you to share with our viewers what inspired you to co-author this book that is titled captivating the simple hearted sure pavan So my name is Peter and for about 12 years I've been a professional writer. Okay. Um I've specialized in issues uh relating to South Asia, the Indian subcontinent, um Sikh people and the origins of Sikhi uh, among other things. Sure. Um I've also um authored uh, a lot of material including a recent book on Gandhi uh, called Gandhi Racist or Revolutionary. Okay. And I've been writing about these issues of of caste and human rights in India. and uh this is a labor of love that uh my co-author and I Bhajan Singh and I have been working on for uh the past year and a half or so to really to to try and present the the history of the Sikh people um and their origins in big picture context of the history of the Indian subcontinent and to explain why the history of the Sikhs was so crucial it was a turning point for the entire history of the Indian subcontinent and then to also explain how Sikhi from its origins originated as an egalitarian movement to okay. uplift the downtrodden and to oppose the caste system which was so prevalent in the subcontinent Well, obviously as you know that caste system is more than 2 millennia old. It's uh, it's been more than 2000 uh, years since caste system took birth in the Indian subcontinent and it has been prevalent. Not it has been, but it even in today's It is still prevalent. It is still prevalent. Yeah. You know, the politics, the economics, the society is highly influenced by the caste system. So, here we have an institution that's 2000 years old. Yeah. As the t- as time is going by, 1469 clicks. Yeah. Guru Nanak is born. Yes. A new dawn has taken place. What was so different during that time? How was it the perfect mixture that Sikhi had to take birth in the Indian subcontinent? What was going on socially and politically during that time in South Asia that it became a necessity to to give support to the people? Obviously, you know, like I said, the caste system had been going along hmm. for so many years it had been almost been so you know 1500 years and then you know sikhi takes birth how was it so socially and politically so uh, on the on the social level within the indian subcontinent you had the caste system as the basic social structure of society okay. which was enforced on the masses uh, of the people 85 90% of the population uh having this these this rigid oppressive hierarchical social structure uh enforced and imposed and and um uh, impressed upon them that's on the social plane right. on the political plane you had this invasion of india uh around 1469 around the 15 early 1500s sure. you had this invasion of india by the moguls uh who were descended from the mongols and uh were a, were a muslim dynasty Right. They invaded India through uh through Afghanistan and and um north north uh, western India the subcontinent right came in 
and dominated it, subjugated it, conquered it, and then ruled it for several hundred years. Okay. So you had that perfect mixture uh, for this super oppressive system to be imposed politically from the invading occupying forces, socially from the caste system, from the, from the Brahmins and the upper castes who were benefiting from and imposing this caste system. It was this poisonous mixture. And then Guru Nanak came into the picture. So are you saying, when you say poisonous system, are you saying that having that caste system, did it enable the Mughals to invade India or the uh, South Asian subcontinent it very much with empowered. ease? It, it very much empowered their invasion. And actually our book talks about quoting people from the time, Persian historians, Mughal historians from that time period, who said that we recognized that the fabric of society was such that the divisions caused by the caste system were so great that it made our conquest easier. So if I were to share with my viewers that it is in fact Brahmanism that enabled the Mughals to find uh, to rule India with their iron grip, would that be a correct statement? That's very much a correct statement. A very much a correct statement, yes. Brahmanism enabled the Mughals to rule India. Not only did it enable and en enable them to invade successfully and right. occupy successfully, but once they had actually conquered the subcontinent, right. they allied with Brahmins and other upper castes, brought them into the fold, welcomed them into the fold, wow. and then made them their administrators, made them uh, their enforcement, and used them as collaborators to uh, impose this co-rule, a Mughal Brahmin co-rule of the Indian subcontinent. So oftentimes you get to hear about the divide and rule policy. You know, yeah. A lot of experts would say, oh, the British came and they divided the societies because it would help them rule with ease. Yes. So that statement would be incorrect. Well, Since the society was false. already fragmented at that point, even when the Mughals were coming into India, so the, the society was already divided. Society was fragmented long before the British got there, and it's become a trope. It's become a uh, common lie put out by neo hindutva Hindu nationalists who are caste apologists right. to say that, oh, the caste system was invented by the British, which is, it's pure hogwash. It's right. just on the basis of history, um, if, if you look at what the, guru, what the gurus, the Sikh gurus were writing in the 15, 1600s, they were writing about the caste system. If they were writing about the caste system and they were writing about the various, the four divisions of the caste system, okay. and they were writing about this idea of outcasts and untouchables, then if that was the case in 15, 1600s, then there's no way that you can possibly argue or believe that the British invented this caste system or that uh, society was fragmented uh, only by the British and not long before that. Well, so it is truly important for all the Sikhs and all the freedom lovers for us to read history, read the analysis of history so we do not repeat it. And uh, along with that, Peter, um, now that we have set the tone that this book revolves around the struggle for human dignity in the Indian subcontinent, it is about the caste system and the opposition of the caste system. Mm -hmm. Was there a certain point in your life when you and your co-author, Bhajan, decided, okay, you know what, we're going to wake up tomorrow and we're going to go ahead and write a book? Well, if I, can see the, if I can see the book, so I'll tell you what, this is actually, this didn't start as a book. Okay. This started as a, as a pamphlet. We set out to write a five to ten page pamphlet. Wow. We wanted something that would just kind of provide a brief introduction uh, to people about what is Sikhi, especially to non-Sikh Indians. Okay. Um, as we started doing that, and we started doing more research, we started stumbling across all sorts of original primary sources written by Europeans and Mughal and Persian historians um, who were in India, uh, who were witnessing what was happening with the Sikhs and writing about it as third-party objective sources and talking especially about how there was this very noticeable um, intermingling of castes going on with the That is Sikh good. Community. Viewers, we're gonna jump right into the abyss, but before that, we must take a short break. Hi, my name is Kuldeep Gill. I'm broker of Sky Realty. 
The reason we are so successful because client trust us. I've been doing this my whole life. My team is my wife, my office manager and my agents. We look forward to on your business and we do speak your language. Thank you. Zara swag ke Vijay Paneja of Elite Bollywood Entertainment Inc. and Velocity Commercial Investments Inc. present The Bunk, The Tour Reloaded. Welcome to Karoga. I'm Salman Khan. Hi everyone, this is Katrina Kess. You see me live. 6 July, Washington. At the Capital One Arena. But this time, Zara Swag ke Welcome back to my show, my life, viewers. And as we continue our journey while trying to study how the caste system has captivated the souls and the freedom of millions and I would say even billion, more than a billion people now, um, I would like you to go ahead and tell our viewers why is it important for a Sikh person to read this book? How would it? How would reading this book make their life a little bit better? Or how would this reading this book would help them understand Sikhi better or the mission, the objective of Guru Nanak? How would it help them understand? Well, to understand the objective of Guru Nanak, I think it's important to go to one of the first foundational things he said, which is the lowest of the low, the lowest of the lowborn, Nanak seeks their company. The friendship of great is in vain. For where the weak are cared for, there thy mercy reigns. So that you mind if I read that to our viewers please. in Gurmukhi? Please. Because I believe that, uh, as we say, the Pankthi, it is from Guru Granth Sahib, right? It is. Okay. So, viewers, Satguru ne kende ne Nicha andar Nicha jat Nichi hu at Nichi. नानक ते के संग साथ वड्या सो क्या रीस जथे नीच समालियन तथे नदर तेरी बख्शीस सो गुरु नानक सेज द लोलीएस्ट ऑफ द लोली द लोएस्ट ऑफ द लो बोर्न नानक सीक्स देयर कंपनी द फ्रेंडशिप ऑफ ग्रेट इज इन वेन फॉर वेयर द वीक आर केयर्ड फॉर there thy mercy reigns. So essentially, the Guru is telling us to be the hero for the underdogs, for yeah. the downtrodden. Yeah. It, so the mission of Sikhi is to uplift those who cannot help themselves? Yes, it's to uplift those who cannot help themselves. The mission of Sikhi is to say, this is the most wretched, the most dejected, the most um, downtrodden, and oppressed person in my path. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to touch their feet. And then once I do that, I'm going to work to uplift them. And I'm going to treat them as an equal. And then in treating them as an equal, I'm also going to teach them, as I'm working on it myself, how to be royal, how to be noble. And so that's the mission of Sikhi, is to uplift the downtrodden, instill them with this sense of human dignity, right. and then understand that Nobility and royalty, being a king or right. a queen, is achievable by even the commonest person. And that was a revolutionary message in the time when it was developed in the 15-1600s in medieval India. So now that the Guru's message is saying that any common person could become the ruler, could yes. become the ruling class, could become the noble, isn't that somewhat related to the UN Charter where it says people have the right to self-govern? Very much so, very much so. It was this idea that Guru started propagating this. Right. Guru Nanak propagated it. Guru Arjun, uh, the fifth Guru, uh, whose martyrdom day is actually, uh, has just passed yes. on May 30th. And he particularly focused on this idea and really, really drew it out. This idea that government is by consent. Okay. That kingship is earned. Right. The kingship is earned by serving people and not by being a dictator or by imposing your will on another person. And that um, 
royalty is not through lineage or bloodline, which is what the Brahmins believed. It's what the upper caste believed and taught, right. was that you're born into a certain class. Yes. And you stick to that. Yeah, very much so. But very a guru so. totally denounced it. He completely denounced it. So would it be correct to draw the analysis that Guru Arjun was martyred probably because he said he the the Brahmin class, the upper class, viewed him as a threat to their um, to their power. Yeah, that's very accurate, Pavan. Uh, so the Brahmins and the Mughals collaboratively, jointly, according to our research, did view Guru Arjun as a threat to their power. They they viewed him as propagating this idea of individual sovereignty and encouraging people to be free to practice liberty and to, to live their lives without the constraints imposed on them by either the state or by these religious rituals of, of the Brahmins. And so he was arrested. Okay. And when he was taken to, um, he was taken to the Mughal Emperor's court, right. uh, Jah Jahangir's court. Okay. And Jahangir, um, actually he writes about this. He writes about why he, why he had the guru arrested. Okay. And he says that in his diary, Jahangir says that he had the guru arrested because he was going about, he was preaching and teaching his message, and his message was captivating many simple-hearted and foolish Hindus, in the words of the emperor. Wow. And f people were flocking to him. Right. And keeping his, his shop warm, in the words of the emperor. Okay. And so he was very popular, and he was captivating these so-called simple-hearted Hindus, uh, who, as our research reveals, were actually people of low caste or outcast status. So when, when the guru, he's arrested for this reason, he's brought to the court, and he's given an option. He's given an option of either you can be executed, right, or... You can do what the Brahmins and the Mughal rulers want you to do, which is to erase the objectionable passages from the Adi Granth, the precursor to the Guru Granth. Sabha. Right. And he refuses to do that, but in our, in our, and he's executed. But in our research, what we've drawn out is that those objectionable passages were actually these passages that he's teaching and propagating this unique, innovative concept for that time right. that there is universal nobility achievable right. for the common person. So you just mentioned something. You said um, the, the emperor said that a guru was captivating the simple-hearted Hindus. Now, if someone is in the lower caste, do they even have anything to do with Hinduism or following the rules from Brahmanism? So what if... Would it be incorrect to label them as Hindus when somebody is saying that I don't even want to be in this position? Aye, aye, aye. That's How a can great you question. label me that? Yeah, that's a great question. Right? Isn't that what the BJP, the Hindutva, what the RSS is doing to the masses in the, in the Indian subcontinent, that these got people are Hindus when they are clearly stating that we're not Hindus? Well, the BJP and the RSS is actually taking a step further. Right, even okay. Than that. And they're saying that and what anybody, is that? that the BJP and the RSS is propagating Hindutva, this idea of Hinduness. Right. And they're propagating this idea and saying that anybody that's born in India, in the subcontinent, is a Hindu, even if you're a Christian, you're a Muslim, you're a Sikh, okay. you're a Jain, you're a Buddhist, whatever you are that's officially, in your own words, not Hindu, they're still saying if you're born in the subcontinent, you are a Hindu. And they're saying Hinduism is cultural, not religious. But what you're saying about, about these low castes and these outcast people, that's actually a fantastic question, and I think you're spot on, is that to call somebody, say, a Dalit person who's right. been treated as an outcast, been treated as an untouchable, to right. say that they are a Hindu by choice, is it's just, it's outlandish. It's ridiculous. Right. Well, they they're not Hindu by choice or by uh, enforcement. No, because if you you're not following the goddess or the deities. You're not allowed in the temples anyways. You're not allowed to socially associate with these people. You're not allowed to share the wealth with society. Then what am I? You know, how am I even a part of that society that doesn't even want me there? Right, right. And so it's oftentimes said that 80% of the population of India is Hindu. 
And right. yet, from that but, perspective... But that's what the politicians say, right? That's what the politicians because say. Because to, to promote their agenda of uh, division, uh, you know, divide and rule, that's what they want us to do, right? Yes. I am loving this heated uh, discussion, and I truly am captivated by the book and by what you are sharing with us. Um, you know, I have never looked at Guru's message from the perspective that you are offering to me and our viewers. But before we delve more into it, Let's go ahead and take another short break. Hi, my name is Kuldeep Gill. I'm broker of Sky Realty. The reason we are so successful, because clients trust us. I've been doing this my whole life. My team is my wife, my office manager, and my agents. We look forward to on your business, and we do speak your language. Thank you. Vijay Paneja of Elite Bollywood Entertainment Inc. and Velocity Commercial Investments Inc. present The Bunk, The Tour Reloaded. I'm Salman Khan. Hi everyone, this is Katrina Kess. See me live. 6 July, Washington. At the Capital One Arena. But is bad, Sarah Swag is Welcome back to the show, viewers. Let's go ahead and try to wrap this up. So, Peter, we were saying that the Mughals and the Brahmins, they both viewed uh, the message of Guru as a as an obstruction. They, they viewed it, uh, the Guru's message as, they a viewed threat. It as a threat. As a threat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, you not being a Sikh, you're a devout Christian. Has writing this book helped you become a better Christian? Or do you see any parallels between Sikhi and Christianity or the common message of humanity? What, what is your take on that? As far as becoming a better Christian, I don't really like to go there because I don't feel comfortable ranking the quality or the level of my Christianity. Okay. But as far as the parallels, yeah, I, I certainly see parallels. Okay. Um, we read out this passage from Guru Nanak where he kind of lays this foundation for Sikhi, which is to seek the company of the lowest of the low, because that's where God's mercy reigns. Right. Uh, within my own faith, there are these themes throughout the scriptures of Christianity, um, which have been written over centuries, thousands of years. Right. Imposing this obligation on somebody that if they want to call themselves a person of God, then they have to do the things that God requires of them. And in various places it's written, for instance, that one of, what, what does God require of you? Well, God requires of you to uh, do justice, okay. to love mercy. Okay, which is very reasonable. Which is very reasonable, and to walk humbly with God. Okay. Um, elsewhere it said, and this was actually uh, the disciple James, one of the disciples of, of Jesus, um, he writes, what is true religion? True religion is to care for widows and orphans. That's true religion. Wow. And then elsewhere, Jesus himself says that, okay, if you want to call yourself a Christian, you want to call yourself one of me, he says, when you die and you come into paradise, right. and you come to me and you say, my Lord, Jesus, Lord, Lord. Well, if you do that, and I know, or I ask you, and I know, you have not fed the hungry, nursed the sick, clothed the naked, visited the imprisoned, welcomed in the stranger and the refugee. Right. These things, if you haven't done that, but you're still coming to me and saying, Lord, Lord, then Jesus says, I'm going to say you're not mine. Wow. So I so see those So having threats. compassion is a prerequisite. Having compassion is a prerequisite. Yes. In fact, if, if you don't have compassion, you're not a Christian. Oh, okay. Well, I, I can certainly agree to that. Although I'm not a Christian, I can definitely, you know, fit into that category that oh, we, we feel the same from what I, my understanding of the Guru's message is that, you know, compassion is, is the first. Um, well, let's talk more about the book. So when you, um, when you were writing this, did you feel um, that 
the American society is being infiltrated by the Hindutva agenda or um, by the RSS or through Modi or through the International Yoga Day or through cow culture, um, do you feel um, like they're trying to infiltrate the Western society? Well, in writing Captivating the Simple Hearted, I didn't feel that so much, although there are elements of that, especially okay. as in the book, uh, later on, um, we talk about Gandhi. We okay. talk about a lot of, we talk about the development of modern India, gotcha. especially in relation to the prominent personalities. We talk about Gandhi. Okay. And Gandhi has been used to infiltrate the West. Uh, his statues have been put up all over um, the West, all over America, all over Europe. And they've been put up and paid for by the Indian government. But that's a little bit of a different issue from the infiltration of RSS, BJP, this sort of thing. Okay. After finishing this book, that ended up being the topic of my next book. And so I have just concluded a book um, about that topic, also co-authored with Bhajan Singh. Oh, wow. In which we do very directly discuss this topic of infiltration of Hindutva into American society and into American universities and into American um, educational curriculum. And we talk about uh, the organizations that are doing it. Okay. Uh, what, one of the most prominent is Hindu Swayam Sevak Song, which is the international wing of the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Song. Gotcha. But we also talk about some other lesser known ones. Okay. And how they're connected to this HSS and to the wow. RSS. And we draw out some of these threads and talk about who's doing what and how. As an American citizen, do you feel like you need to share this with the rest of the American society? Do you see this as a threat? Because um, as they are getting more and more prominent, um, as they are becoming more mainstream, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're aware of the fact or not, but uh, an organization called World Hindu Congress mm. is holding an event uh, this coming September in Chicago. And the head of RSS, which is a semi uh, terrorist organization, uh, from my understanding, from it's, what the American it, it, think tanks are saying. It's an armed, paramilitary, uniformed, all male organization which was directly inspired by the fascism of Mussolini and Adolf Hitler. Wow. Okay, so you even explain it better than I could. Uh, so their head is expected to share the stage with Tulsi Gabbard. Yes. Tulsi Gabbard has taken the oath of the U.S. Constitution. Yes. To serve the American public, to treat people with equality and justice for all. How do you see that? Well, I see that as important to remember that Hindu nationalism, which is basically what RSS is propagating, okay. shares the stage frequently sure. behind the scenes. The stage behind the scenes frequently shares the stage with white nationalism. Hindu nationalism and white nationalism are kissing cousins. They're, they're, they're holding hands wow. uh, in, behind closed doors. And several prominent uh, white nationalists here in the U.S., uh, David Duke, for instance, from Louisiana, who's run for governor of Louisiana, who uh, served in the um, Louisiana state legislature, who's run for president multiple wow. times. Wow, okay. He's um, inspired by, by the Nazis. Uh, he used to be a grand, uh, he used to be a, a grand wizard uh, okay. in the KKK. Gotcha. Um, he actually, in his, own, in his autobiography, uh, he praises Hindu nationalism, he praises the caste system, and he says, he, went to, he traveled to India, and he says, when I went there and I traveled to India, uh, one of the things that happened was at that moment I had, I had my awakening. And David Duke says, in India, I realized I'm an Aryan. And the goal of my life is to propagate Aryanism. Well, David Duke has done that, There's, and, and he's done that in the past, in the past few decades. There's white nationalists today who are publishing uh, literature. Uh, they own publishing houses, okay. uh, including a publishing house that used to be based in India. Wow. There are white nationalists uh, today who are affiliated with the same people who staged the violence in Charlottesville, Virginia. There are white nationalists today like this 
who are working with and openly talking about it. They're going back to uh, India, they're meeting with the BJP, they're meeting with the RSS, and they're making plans. God only knows what kinds of plans, but they're open about their meetings with these people, and they're open about their, their affiliation. So if Tulsi Gabbard is sharing the stage with Mohan Bhagwat of the RSS, then indirectly she's sharing the stage with white nationalists of the KKK, of the neo-Nazis, of wh whoever else from here in the U.S. I am stunned. I am speechless by what you just shared. And quite honestly, I am shivering. But I think, being a Sikh, I need to put that message in my heart. And that is to still raise my voice, regardless of how shocking the news are. I must muster my courage and speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. Yes. That is the Guru's message. Yes. What is one message that you would like to go ahead and share with the Sikh community? The one message. I would like you to look right in the camera and tell our viewers what is one message that you can give to the, to the global Sikh community and how they can counter the biggest threat, which, uh, which uh, I mean, the players might have changed, but the game has essentially stayed the same. They martyred the fifth Guru, Guru Arjun, yes. and they are still martyring more Sikhs. But how can we prevent our future generations from getting martyred by the same butchers and tyrants? The same butchers and tyrants, that's what Guru Nanak called them. He said, uh, this age is a knife. He said, the kings are butchers. He said, the kings are tigers. He said, their servants, their, their administrators are dogs. Right. Um, so it is the same, the same struggle. It's the same battle today. And you know what, Pawan? I think it's always going to be. It's always going to be this struggle between, on one hand, tyranny, and on the other hand, liberty. Wow. And these conflicting, opposing, irreconcilable worldviews where one person wants to oppose, oppose, impose oppression right. and the, the masses, they want to escape it. And they need this liberating message of, of the gurus. They need this liberating message of, of the U.S. where we had the Declaration of Independence, which yes. said that all men are created equal right. and that, um, with the right to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Yes. which is very much um, hand in glove with this message of the Sikh Gurus. So what I would like to leave the viewers with is to really embrace this message of the Sikh Gurus, which is, as Guru Nanak said, to seek the company of the lowest of the low. And that anybody can become a king or a queen Anybody can be royal, but as Guru Arjun taught, as Guru Nanak taught, even an ant filled with the love of God is worth more than an emperor or a king with all the riches of the world. And as Guru Arjun taught, the way to become noble is to be a servant. Wow. And to uplift the downtrodden. Well. Thank you, uh, Peter, for coming out to our studio. Thank you, Paul. And uh, I really do appreciate that you took time out of your busy schedule and uh, you know came out and shared your view with, uh, with our viewers, our audience. And once again, I would like to go ahead and request everyone to go ahead and get your hands on this. The title is Captivating the Simple Hearted. And then with that, we go ahead and wrap up our show for today. Well, we'll see you next week, same place. Same time, Wahi Gurji Ka Khalsa, Wahi Gurji Ki Fateh.